Welcome in everyone. Cassie Soto of Vegas Nation here with you as we are just about three weeks away from the 2023 NFL Draft. As of now, April 5th, the Raiders have 12 draft picks, including that number seven overall pick. So with that, let's go ahead and bring in our NFL reporter for the Las Vegas Review Journal, Adam Hill, to get his thoughts on what he thinks the Raiders might do at number seven. Adam, uh, you heard me there. Three weeks away. We're getting closer and closer to that April 27th day one draft date. So put on your GM hat here. Give us your best general manager impression. If you're the Raiders, what are you doing at number seven overall? Well, I think pretty much in general, every year I'm thinking the same thing. I'm always looking to trade back because I just love extra picks. But in the Raiders' case, they might not even be interested in doing that. They already have 12. I think they're more likely to move up in a couple spots, uh, really target the guys that they want, and you know, move around in the draft, maybe going up. You go down to 10 picks or even nine, but some of those picks are more premium. That's probably the way to go. But if you're staying at seven here, and I think that's probably what they're going to do, it it's going to depend on how things fall. If one of the top three quarterbacks fall to you, and I say three because most people say four, I don't think Will Levis is in that group. But if you have Young or Stroud, which is very unlikely, or Anthony Richardson, I think that's a, a, a choice you probably have to make. I think you have to take one of those guys if they fall to you, but I don't think they're going to fall. So to me, it's best defensive player available because I don't think one of the offensive linemen is you know good enough to be there. Skaronsky is okay, uh, but I don't think I'd make that pick there. So for me, it's targeting the best defensive player. Will Anderson is probably gone. He's the best defensive player on the board. I don't know that you can take Jalen Carter with some of the baggage that he has and some of the history in this town with him. Uh, so then you're kind of looking around and saying, all right, who's that next group? Tyree Wilson is a guy a lot of people like. That might be the guy. But to me, it's corner. And I think there's two corners that are worthy of being picked there. Uh, Christian Gonzalez is the one a lot of people like out of Oregon. Uh, but I'm more of a Devin Witherspoon fan, and I think there's people in the organization that agree with me on that. I think he's a Raiders-type player. Uh, he fits the coverage they want to play. Very smart player, but really, he will come up and, and run support and light people up. And I think Raiders fans will love the fact that he's willing to get physical. Also, a teammate of Nate Hobbs in college, I think that'd be an interesting pairing uh, for this Raiders team to have. So, uh, to me, it's Devin Witherspoon at seven. That's the guy I'd be targeting, and we'll see what the Raiders have in store, if, if that's the pick they want to make as well. You mentioned the top three quarterbacks, Adam. So I'm just wondering, do you think the Raiders at this point are just doing their due diligence by taking a guy like Anthony Richardson out to dinner or inviting a guy like Will Levis to the Henderson headquarters for a top 30 visit? Are they just checking those boxes to say, yeah, we talked to them, regardless of if they even want a quarterback at that spot now? Because we know they keep adding some quarterbacks to their roster. Yeah, and I think part of, you know, when you look at the quarterbacks they added, and one being Brian Foyer, Brian Hoyer is here to be a mentor to somebody. Like, he's not here to be a long-term answer as a backup quarterback. Brian Hoyer signing, to me, suggests that they're absolutely drafting a quarterback at some point. Now, of course, you have to do your due diligence. They already did try to move up to the one spot. They, they put some feelers out. How much is it going to cost to get up there? So they've talked about it. They could also move up to three if they fall in love with one of those quarterbacks who falls to three, if it is Anthony Richardson, and I think they do like him, you can move up to three, maybe even four, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But there, there's movement that could be made in, in that spot. So if you fall in love with somebody, yes, you have to move up and take them. And, hey, look, if somebody falls, maybe other teams see something that you don't. They, they don't like something about these quarterbacks and they fall to you. You have to know when you're picking seven, oh, is that a guy that you want? Like, do you want to go ahead and grab one of these quarterbacks? So, yeah, you do your due diligence. Uh, you're aware of what they are. If you fall in love with somebody, if they really fit and they connect with you, I think quarterback more than any position has to fit with the culture of what you're trying to build. And so, yeah, if somebody's a perfect fit, then then sure you have to make that you know make that decision and, and know what you have in those guys so they're doing this and they're going to pick a quarterback at some point i just don't know that it's going to be with the first round all right well we know that adam hill every once in a while has some crazy takes right we know that we know that about you adam but i want to know if you have heard any crazy takes yourself any ridiculous draft takes uh, regarding the raiders or just a overall crazy draft take so far this year leading up to the 2023 draft We'll give you a couple. First of all, there's a, there's a mock draft that came out this week that the Raiders moving up in the first round from seven to four and taking Paris Johnson, the offensive lineman out of Ohio State. That is wild. What are we talking about here? You could pick him at seven, and I don't think that'd be the guy they'd pick anyway. That was crazy. But more of what's in line around the draft, what's percolating, what's kind of bubbling up out there. Watch the Colts at four. I referenced that pick earlier. The Colts could use that fourth pick and make a trade, or they can even wait till after the draft to make a trade. 
But why would the Colts take an unproven commodity and Anthony, Anthony Richardson, who's a lot of people speculating they would take, why wouldn't they instead make a trade and get Lamar Jackson? Like the Colts have made these deals the last couple of years to bring in like 75 year old Philip Rivers. They brought in a broken down Matt Ryan, uh, Carson Wentz, who couldn't even move anymore. You've taken all these shots on quarterbacks that haven't worked out. Now you've got Shane Steichen, the former UNLV quarterback as offensive coordinator. Who did he have as his quarterback last year? Jalen Hurts, and he took him to the Super Bowl. Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson do a lot of the same things, but Lamar does them better. How good would that offense look? Why are you keep taking these wild shots on quarterbacks when Lamar Jackson is out there? I think it's interesting. Now, the issue is Jim Irsay has said, I don't believe in guaranteed contracts. Lamar Jackson wants a guaranteed contract. So it's a little bit risky, but I think that's one to watch. Could they use that fourth pick or even make a selection at four, make a trade after the draft and use the next two first round picks on Lamar Jackson? I think it's something to watch. Adam, thank you so much. Really appreciate your insight. Adam and I will be doing a draft update like this every Wednesday leading up to the 2023 NFL draft set for Thursday, April 27th. So be sure to check in with us at VegasNation.com or LVRJ.com for all of your latest Raiders news. For Adam Hill, I'm Cassie Soto. We'll see you soon.